Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. All right. Are you glad to be here? I'm not going to take you much of your time tonight. I just want to share something small with you. And then I'm um, right. Now, I'm, um, I want to give you a little, the title of my message is, I can have two titles. So that's the problem. You understand? So, I'm talking about anointed men. And uh, so that makes it three titles. But anointed men and love. That's what I'm talking about. Love and anointed men. All right. Ephesians chapter 3. Now, if you don't really want to come to this service, I want to really ask that you don't come. Or if you are too tired, you shouldn't come. All right? Because when you come, huh? Because when you come, it makes me change my message. When you don't really want to come and you come, then I feel you are here. Then I change my message. So try, try to not come. The fewer, the merrier. Ephesians 3. Um, Verse 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man so that Christ may dwell in your hearts right through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love, all right, may comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. And then to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, love, and then you may be filled up to the fullness of God. I gave you a formula last week. What was it? Love. Huh? Love, see, more love, fill. Okay, where is the see? See what? Uh, the world cannot see. That is why I cannot receive the anointing. Okay. All right. Now, where are we? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. All right. So that you be rooted and grounded in love may comprehend. All right. Or understand. Or see the length, the breadth, the height, the depth. And then after you've understood more, you love more. To know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. Okay? And that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Or God's spirit. Or the spirit. Or the anointing. So you love. And then after you love so much, you begin to understand more things. The length and the depth and the breadth and the height. You begin to know what the length is. You never knew before. Then you now know the breadth. And you find out that the length is different from the breadth. Amen. And then the height. Amen. You never knew the height before. Amen. Then after that, you know the depth. These are all things you didn't know before. Amen. Then after that, then you begin to now know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. That is why people who go to Bible school sometimes are sometimes the most useless people as far as ministry is concerned because love passes knowledge there is a vast difference between knowledge and love 
And love is far superior to knowledge. Amen. If you have somebody who loves or somebody who knows, choose somebody who loves. Amen. The people who work for me, I don't care what they know. I've never asked them for their certificates. I don't know what they know. I don't know what they learned in school. It doesn't really matter. I choose people who love me and I can sense that they love me. And those are the people that I choose to work with me. The more love you have, the more you can work. It far surpasses knowledge. So you learned what is good. I, I, I don't know what you learned and I don't care what you learned. That is why in our church, I don't have an accountant looking after accounts. I have somebody who loves me looking at accounts. Don't use accounting uh, knowledge to choose an accountant. C-A Ghana, C-A A-C-C-A. And so I make you Sima. I make you. You will come and sew me up somewhere and destroy my life and the life of the ministry. Love surpasses knowledge by far. Oh, you don't understand the message. Huh? A lawyer who loves you is better than a lawyer who knows all things. Because if you have been arrested for some case, and you have a lawyer who knows so many things, but doesn't love you, when you meet him to discuss your case, he will tell you so many theories, throw sand into your eyes, and leave it. Meanwhile, if it is a lawyer who really loves you and wants you to be free or clear from this trouble, he will even before you come have meetings to discuss and see the person behind. Can we settle this case out of court? Look, if you know this thing, the way it is going, when they take it to court and they do this and this and that and that and that, this is what I need to be the shortest way. We will not waste money. That person loves you. He may not even know as much as those confused guys up there who have all the degrees in law, masters and PhD. But his love for you and his passion to see you cleared from certain things will make him work for you differently. You people, you've not been to court before. If you see somebody who is in court, I see one time I went to uh, the prison and I met one of our church members there and he has been accused of killing somebody and he says he didn't kill the person but he's in prison. Now his life as he's there he cannot come to town. Number two, he does not know law. Number three, he has not been to court before. Number four, his life depends on somebody who is out freely moving in town to do things so that in the end he will be free. Now, if that person doesn't have a feeling for the guy who is in the prison, do you think he will be free now? The first time I saw that guy, I was so moved. Then I went back to the prison after about one year and I saw the guy that says, hey, what is happening? He said, oh, the case, they are now going to start the case. He has got a lawyer. I said, oh, he can be there for four years, five years. And the lawyer will say, bring money. He has to write to a friend in America, somebody here, relative here, to give. And the lawyer says, if you don't pay, three, six million now. That's how the lawyer, six million pay, six million now. We will not do the case at all. E do you understand when I say love surpasses knowledge? A lawyer who loves you is far higher than a lawyer who knows all the law. But he doesn't love you. That's why Jesus stopped preaching. And he died for us to show us his love. Ah, I preach and preach and preach and show you the depth and length and breadth of his knowledge. It will not be moved. But his love has moved us. His love has transformed us. His love has made us want to live for him. 
His love has made us want him more and more. So, in fact, you people, you must understand something. That anointed people, eh, they are loving people. Yes. Anointed people are loving people. They have love. They love God very much. Which is different from knowing God. Knowing about God. Writing about God. Speaking about God. They know God. Then they love the people to whom they are sent. Paul said the love of Christ constrains us. It is the love of Christ that is pushing us and pressing us and motivating us. Get a doctor who loves you rather than a doctor who knows a lot. The doctor who loves you will do anything to help you. And the doctor who knows a lot will give you 48 lab tests to go and do. Come in two weeks' time to see me. Obafe tests are S-rays, laboratory, urine, stool. You poopoo, you take. You bring another poopoo, you take. Wee wee again, you take. Bring another wee wee. Oh, saliva. We want your saliva. We want this place. We want here. This, that. Oh, it will never be free, I tell you. Oh, buy your test. And the actual solution will not be done for you. It's true. You don't understand the message, you see. So love. Anointed people have love. And many of us, what we need is love. Because when you are anointed, you are lifted up. An anointed person is often a person in authority. And when you are in power, eh, you can do many things. You can hurt many people. And you can stop certain things. Right now, I'm, I'm in a position of authority. I can change this gentleman's ministry tomorrow. And if I take a decision about him, nobody in the church can change it. There is nobody who can change what I say. You didn't know that, you see. I mean, it's like that. I mean, that's the kind of authority that I have. It's, it's, it's a lot of authority for a human being to have. It's, 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 that is why many churches try to have democratic systems because it's too much power for one person to have. I can say to, to one, go and he goeth. That's the end. One day, I had some pastors. They were talking too much. No, I'm, I'm summarizing. I don't want to go into the case. No, I don't want to go into the case. But eventually, I was, I was really not happy with the way they were going. And I realized that, look, these guys don't appreciate what's happening here. So I decided to sack them. So I sacked them. I said, I sacked you from the ministry. I have sacked you from the field where I sent you. I have sacked you from full-time ministry. I have sacked you fully. I said, you, your family, and everything, pack out now and return to the place that I bought tickets for them and sent them back. I said, it's finished. So I, I came to wait for them. I knew they would come. I'm talking about anointed men have authority. If you are not a man who has the love of God, you will kill people. So, based on the situation, I suck it. Because you people, you do, do you know apples? Apple? When you have one bad apple among 25 good apples, 
It spoils the other apples. So you have to pick it out of the apples before all the apples get spoiled. So I said, out, it's finished. So eventually when they came, I knew they were good. They would come and see me, so they came. But I called one of my children. I said, practice this song. When they come, you sing this song for them. Yeah. So when they came, I said, yeah, I have sacked you. I have sacked you from a church. Go and find a job, find a car, find a house. Is it Togo they are playing? That they are shouting? Okay, anyway, back. Serious, serious. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. So, when they came and I finished for- formalizing the sacking, I said, I said to the lady, I said, sing this song. So she sang the song. You know what the song I said? I said, sing this song. Let's think about our father's heart so bright and true. He's never given up, given up on me or you. Let's think about our God of love and mercy. He's nursed as white as snow for all eternity and give our love and praise to him. He is our Savior and Now, I think they didn't get so I said, sing, the, sing it again. So I sang it again. Let's think about our Father's heart so right and true. He's never given up, given up on me or you. Let's think about our God of love and mercy free. He's washed as white as snow for all eternity and gave our love and praise to him. He is our Savior and our friend. I told them after I finished talking and that, me, I'll never give up on you. Yeah. No matter what, I have hope. Even though I've sacked you, I have to sack you. But in my heart, I will never give up. Because a father should never give up. If, no matter if your child is in prison. When Yongi Cho came to Ghana, his child was in prison. His child was in, as he was sitting. So when Pastor Oko was singing that song, uh, God will take her, he was very moved. Uh, what does the word say? Be not dismayed. Whatever be tired, God will take care of you. Sing it, brother, come on. Under the wings, Under the wings of love of, abide. Mm. God will take care of you. God will. God will take care of you through every day, all of the way. He will will take care of you. God. Pastor is not a their son is not a pastor. None of his sons are pastors. Businessmen doing all kinds of things, and one has gone to get into trouble, and he's a but the father's heart is with his child. I no matter what your child is. Yeah. And that is a, a spiritual father, too. So I said, I'll never give up on you. But I only that I have to do what I'm doing. And by the grace of God, today they are back fully in the ministry, in full-time ministry, working and preaching wherever they may be. Amen. But, if I have anointing and I don't have love, I say you, this thing that you said, you didn't understand what you have said. It's finished. You see, Elisha, when Gehazi went to buy food and he saw Naaman and he told Naaman that my father says 
he needs that thing that you ask to give him. He said he doesn't. He said he needs it now. He needs it now. He has changed his mind. When Elisha came, Elisha said, Do you know the meaning of what you have? You have spot my name to the whole of Syria. It's finished. And he cursed, he said, the, the leprosy of Naaman. When I cast it out, it has been moving the atmosphere, trying to find where to go. Now that leprosy will come to you, my assistant. Finish. And that was the end of that double portion of anointing. End. End of anointing. So my brothers and my sisters, love is very essential for you to climb into the higher heights of the anointing. You must see yourself as a sinner in order to be able to love people. That's one of the keys to love. It's recognizing that God has given you many chances as you are standing there. How many, many, many opportunities has God given you? Why wouldn't you give somebody an opportunity? One thing that I can't stand is when I have somebody who cannot stand others. That thing I also don't, don't tolerate. Because the point that I'm making is that I have accepted you. How come you will not accept somebody else? Why? Why should you be accepted? Are you not also a human being? And you, a human being, you don't want to accept other human beings. You want to delete this person, but you want to not be deleted. And flow. Are you a special flower? Are you a special cinnamon spice which cannot be found anywhere in the world? You are as rotten as all of them, but only that God has accepted you. It's one of the most terrible. That is why that sin where he said that if you do not forgive others, only that, you if you like, kill somebody and pray for God forgiveness, you will be forgiven. I'm not saying you should go and kill anybody, but I'm just saying that if you were to have killed somebody, if you were to have lied, if you were to have slept with 1,000 different people, if you were to have spoiled 1,000 marriages, do, God will forgive you. But there's one thing that he said he will not forgive you. That is if you do not forgive others. That is the only thing in the Bible where it says he will not forgive you for that thing. You do not want to accept somebody, but you want to be accepted. You can't stand people, but you want people to stand you. When your presence here is just grace. Adam. Total Adam. Now you don't want to accommodate your accommodation. Do you know what is accommodation? There is a medical word and that word should help you to understand accommodation. You see, in the eye, we have what we call the ciliary muscles, I believe. And they open, if you look in there, you have the iris, which goes wider and smaller. You get it? So what happens is that when there's bright light, the thing goes a bit smaller, and then you use um, a certain part of your eye nerves or, 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 or cells, the, uh, the rods are used in darkness and the cones are used in the light. So the cones, the rods and cones, but the cones work more. The shape is like a cone, it's like a rod. So the cones work more when there's bright light. But when the darkness comes, then, you know, it accommodates and the whole eye just adjusts to the darkness. That is why in the darkness you find that you can see. Because it has adjusted itself and shifted, has accommodated you, has accommodated the darkness. And that is how can we even see that there's no life in you. When you are dead, we put a small light and pass it over your eye. And if we see that the iris doesn't move, it doesn't adjust to the light so that you are dead. 
there's no spiritual life in you when you cannot accommodate others there's no more life in you you are dead and some of you you are used to using only your cones but not your rods you only use you are only used to bright people nice people rich people good people people without sins people who don't smell a Christian person must know how to hug somebody who smells and somebody who blows fuse it's part of Christianity they are God God likes them and when you hold the person the person knows that I love you you keep watching most of us our love is choche. God so loved the world the world was loved by God and you cannot love more than three people your husband your wife your child three even your husband cry you cannot love yes you are using him as you are using him as a care of a social umbrella to move through society and explain that you are married and a, and, and a, 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 what do you call that thing insemination uh, what do you call it for horses you know it can cost as much as six six million dollars do you see to get a horse to provide his sperms can pay as much as three million four six five six million dollars for a horse's sperm you know a good horse sperm so it's expensive so your husband is a provider and then he's an umbrella a social umbrella but not that you love him that is why you are most irritated when you have to provide him with food yeah or any of the other amenities that you are supposed to <laughs> Uh, 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 it's a very good message uh, it's very spiritual hallelujah God so loved the whole world you love just a few your best friends Three friends, four friends. Beyond that, when you see them, your Alsatian instincts begin to rise. Your Doberman anointings come. Without words, spoken without words. And the ladies know it among themselves. That's why sometimes we, the brothers, we don't understand what they are, they are talking about. So, why is it that you are not flowing with this person? And you can see. <laughs> Doberman spirit! <laughs> and Alsatian anointing. That is why in many churches, women are not pastors. And even when you say this way, a woman is a pastor, they don't even think much of it. Yeah. Because they can't say, woman, pastor. No, but ladies, God, you see, all these things I'm saying, they are not to laugh at you. They are to open your heart a little more so that God's power can change you and make you accommodate room for others if i was not to add some of you to my life where would you be where would you be if i was not to add and thank god for somebody like reverend saki so many people have come he's very secure in his position 
does not think that there is somebody more important. I haven't seen him today. But he knows who he is. But there are some others. If they were in his chair, there was... You now, you'll be afraid to be in the church. Or you don't understand the message. And you should thank God for my wife. Because if my wife, if my wife were not to accommodate a whole lot of people hanging around the church, it will not be easy for you. They will move you with the finger. You. you see one day I went to a crusade and the man of God came to sit in the front and then this was a Benihin crusade and then the organizers went to tell somebody something that the guy sitting in the front is not supposed to be there one of our senior pastors in Ghana so, as for me, I was, I, had, I was sitting on the third row because I have not ventured to the first row. So, they came and they said, you. And the pastor looked, hmm? <laughs> he said, you, this way, this way. He said, what? This way. And they moved him with the finger, this, 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 to the back. And afterwards, the pastor was, his, his face was very morose. Do you, do you understand morose? Yeah. <laughs> it was something. Eesh. <laughs> so thank God for people who do not remove, yeah. remove others yeah. and have not made themselves spiritual police in the church. <laughs> <laughs> a form of spiritual police and spiritual soldiers <laughs> to keep others away. And I tell you, that's one of the reasons why we are able to expand. Because more people are being accepted into the family. Come and be with us. Come and let's be together. Let's work. It's not finished. The work has more place, more things that we are doing. The people, the three hands, four people, we cannot do it. We need more people. Hallelujah. Amen. And I believe more will come. Amen. And the only the thing is that if you don't stand well in your place, people will come and take over where you are standing. But that's what I've seen. People, you see, people don't value what they have. See, one day I went somewhere and I saw something. One of our pastors. And I realized that he does not value the church that he is pastoring. It, it seems to him a small thing. You know. That is why sometimes we abandon God's work for other things. And that is why Moses told Korah, seemeth it to you a small thing that the Lord has brought you nigh. Huh? To himself. It seems a small thing. Even David, that is the same thing. When he went to sleep with Bathsheba, the prophet said that if it was too small, I've given you your master's house, your master's palace, the kingdom. He said, if it was too small, you have asked for one, I would have given you. So I've come to see that most people, they see the work of God as a very small thing. That's why they are banned they just walk out. When you are giving something small, you don't value it. You think that it's not an important post. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. Anyway, I have deviated from my message. Let us go back to the message of love. Anointed men and love. Without love, you are not really going to go for Actually, that is what is missing in most of us. We don't. Do you think I'm doing what I'm doing because of money? Do you think I'm here because of money?
One day I prayed. I said, Lord, use me to sweep. Use me as a broom where others don't want to go. When I went to uh, the Volta region this last week, I had a witch standing outside the tent throwing, I mean openly like this. Then she would stand there again and she would throw like, throughout doing juju as a form of spiritual soldier. Live. And she was looking at me directly because I looked at her in the eyes and I was wondering what to do with her. And the kind of things that they do in that place. Even teachers, when they are transferred, a fancy teacher, they will never go there. <laughs> Unless you are from there. <laughs> Even that guy, they will not go. When we went there, they said, somebody told us, go and ask them for 500 CDs so that we use it to do juju on them. One time, you have just come home. You are coming to do juju. Hey! And it cost us about $20,000 to go there. And the offering was 3 million CDs. And one night, 7,600 people gave their lives to Christ in one night. So, you ask yourself, are we going there because of money? You see, one day I went to the ward. I met a pastor. This pastor was sick. He was dying. And he died. I said, what happened to you? He was dying of chronic renal failure. I mean, you may not know what that is, but it's an incurable condition. So I said, what happened? He said, oh, I went to the water region for a crusade. When I came back, this is what has happened to me. <laughs> I said, hey, <laughs> which type of crusade is this? You see, when you even hear such things, you, you, you will not feel like going to such a place <laughs> as a teacher and the kind of diseases that are there and if the place, oh, and you can see that eh, occultism, juju, agbala, and all this, it brings a curse. Yeah. There is one of the most beautiful regions in the whole country. Nobody wants to go there. Even their own people are afraid of the place. I met a pastor. I said, I said where are you? He said, he was, he's having a church at the town. I said, where is your hometown? I said, Nogokpo. I said, will you go there? I said, I cannot go there now. <laughs> I'm coming to spoil their juju. Eh? He said, every house has an idol in front of the house. I said, and he said, that thing is a form of spiritual police in front of the house, guiding the affairs of the house, or a form of spiritual soldier. And there is another one inside the house that is called legba or so. And they feed it. And that one is guiding everything that you are doing. Even when you go abroad, it is guiding you. <laughs> Both home and away. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Before they have one for the community. One is about high like this, one meter high. Those who come from there are afraid of that place. Do you think we are going there because of money? Look, the real ministry, eh, unless God's love is guiding you, so many other things will guide you. And you should see the people. There is a need for salvation, for Christ. And we are not afraid. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Who? 
a woman can kill me? No. My, my life is in the hands of God. It's not in the hand of somebody standing somewhere. If they would have killed me, they would have killed us in Collegon a long time. Do you know the witches that are here? This is the blood bank of the witches of Accra and of Ghana. This is where they are. By now, we would have been dead in Collegon all They say the guns, the quarreling, the, the Collegon is the highest quarreling guns. The guns too, they like quarreling. That is the spirit. And witchcraft is here more than any other place. If these things will kill us, they have killed us long time. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Go and host and camp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though war rise against me, in this shall I be confident that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength and the defense of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. Sit down. So, I've deviated again. Talking about love and the anointing. God wants to fill your heart with love. Every time I sit on a plane, I sit in a car to travel. I also have a wife and little children. My children are not grown. My children are not 25 years old or 30 years old. My children are not married. I have a a little baby who comes to sit on my lap for me to read to her. Read to me, daddy. Yes, every day. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. When I get on the road, I also have such people. And when I almost died on the Tamale Road, my mind came to my family. Because all of you, if I die, you will be sad. But you go back to your house, eat your granite soup and your rice, and your, there will be crackling laughter in your house as usual. You come and cry, wee, 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 after it will all be gone. And my house will be the deepest, darkest depression that you can ever imagine. Ask any widow what has happened to them. Do you think I sit in a car? When we were going to Hohoi, we saw a car, new Mercedes Benz. I say, blue. Inside was white leather with airbags and everything, shiny new car. There was an articulator that has parked. The back was outside like that. The Bontos was outside in the. <laughs> yeah. When the car came, I don't know how it happened. It went under the, from the under of the windscreen and sliced off the top of the car. So when we came, we saw, oh, it has removed the top of the car like that. The top was here and the car too was there. And smashed the engine and, I mean, scraped off the top. Hey! We are going to a place where they said there is a spiritual police in the front of the house. (laughs) Guiding the affairs of the house. No. Our hearts can never do the real work of God. You see, the work of God is not this get together for couples, singles night, couples marriages, this, this, get end of year, choir, Reheza, get together, uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day. These are all what we call spiritual ringa ringa roses. Do you know spiritual ringa ringa roses? Eh? Spiritual ringa ringa roses. 
Uh, is it the one that they go around? Ringa, ringa, roses. Full of rose. A tissue, a tissue. Of a star. Then you go around. Ringa, ringa, roses. Couples night, fellowship night, a marriage night. End of year night, Easter Sunday, Easter Monday, uh, Christian out at Christian at the beach party, love feast, hallelujah, tissue, tissue, we all fall down. Yeah. That's why I told you don't come in the evening, come in the morning. Because when I, these things, when I say them, you will be offended and you go and say that when we went, he was preaching against get togethers end of year, Father's Day, Mother's Day and that's why I told you not to come in the first place and please next week don't come because it's a spiritual meeting for those who are very serious I'm telling you don't come in the evening just come in the morning attend church in the morning and leave us in the evening I don't have to explain myself all the time Serious rejoiner said something. He said, in doing nothing, the final quest, he said, our only safety was to continue moving further and higher into areas that required more faith. More faith. That was our only security and our only hope. To continue moving higher into things that required more faith and more trusting in God. Most of us have stopped moving into things that challenge our faith. We are engaged in Peter, Lord, Peter, Lord, Peter, Lord, Peter, Peter sent a letter to my Peter draw, Peter drop, Peter drop, Peter sent a letter to my to my mother, and on the way, Allah, on the way, I dropped it. Peter, spiritual Peter drop. No, without loving God, your offerings will be impressive, but it will, no, it will be nothing like something you give when you really love. Hmm? I, I tell you, most of you, you don't really love. And I'm going to read you just one verse at the end, which is the title of my message. I've not yet given you the title of my message. So turn to Songs of Solomon, chapter 8. <laughs> you knew that we would end in the songs. Our love for God, our love for one another, our love for the anointing, our love for Jesus huh, is being taught to us through these wonderful songs. Hallelujah. Oh, chapter 8, verse 1. Oh, that you were like a brother to me. Huh? Most of us, we don't know this kind of love where you relate with somebody till the person is like your brother or your sister. Amen. Amen. Oh, that you were like a brother to me. Hmm? Hmm? Isn't it? We don't know the relationship in the church to be beyond I belong to the same church as you. But to get to a point where your fellow sitting by you is you are like a brother to me. Yes. When my father died, my brothers were sitting by me. Reverend Saki and Pastor Eddie. These are my best friends and my brothers. I play golf with them. I talk with them. I confess my sins to them. I share my life with them. Yes. Oh, that you were like a brother. Many of you don't know. You are, I walk alone. Sister, James Bond, 
you are a mysterious person with no friend and no love. You are a, a stunted, you are stunted growth as far as love is concerned. Which nest at my mother's breasts. You are sharing breasts. You drink, we drink and we also share. Drink small. Okay, you to drink. Drink and I also drink. Have you finished? Let me drink. So close as brothers. Oh, that you were like a brother. Have, have some. That's what we are sharing. Breasts. Mother's breasts. And some of you even the knowledge of you is a mystery. How much more to sharing breasts? I'm going somewhere to see someone about something. To discuss an issue about a certain case. At, at a certain point, I will get in touch. So stand by. Are you working for CIA or what? The left one is better than the right. Taste the left one. I was taught Christian love and fellowship. And since I found it, eh, it was until my sisters found the Lord, I was never close to them. I am close to people who are closely in the Lord. It was when my sisters got saved, one, two, three. Then I, they became to me like Christian sisters. Then I had something in common with them. Oh, that you were to me like my brother. Now, who need love? Who need love? You want to minister? You want to be a pastor of what? Of dogs and goats and cows? And there's no love in you? The ministry will try your love to the highest limit if you like watch and see this is a service for people who are interested in the ministry if they are not interested in God's work the ministry do not come come in the morning leave us in the evening don't come and sit here and sleep and look at me as though I'm preaching to a cow I've preached to a cow before I once preached to a cow the cow was gone. I said you have to be born again no change. When I did the altar call, it was just chewing the guy. Are you a cow? If I found you outdoors, I would kiss you. And no one would despise me either. We are ashamed of love. It's true. We are ashamed of love. And our minds are polluted. We only know bad things. That's why some of us, when we are hugging, we hug, we shoulder. When they're hugging you, we give your shoulder like that. You do it like this. <laughs> because your, your mind is full of rot, rot, rot. And because of the rottenness of your thoughts, we have not been able to fulfill one of the repeated instructions of the Bible. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Mm. Mm. You are thinking of homosexuality. That is why I told you to come in the morning. Don't come in the evening. Yeah. 
Greet if I start to greet the sisters. And I take four sisters here and I greet them with a holy kiss. Because you have slept with so many people. Including managing directors. Deputy minister of trees and grasses. Minister of rabbits and mice. All these have been your boyfriend before. Or even your mother's boyfriend. You have also shared your mother's boyfriend with her. That is why your mind is polluted. He said, if I saw you outside, I will kiss you and I will not be despised. I will not feel ashamed about loving you. We have to pretend. Because all that we know is penis entering vagina. Chakas! There is no need of polluting your mind. There are, there are higher relationships. Oh. Are you the one who went to Jamaica and then you put your hand around the you, you had what? I had Pastor David. I was very happy. I hugged him. I wanted to hide him against. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. And I was wondering what was going on. When he said in the car, said, this place, you hug a man, they think you're homosexual, they will kill you. So that's why he wouldn't want to hug me. Yeah. If you hug a brider, if, you, if a brider hugs a brider, they think you're homosexual in Jamaica. And they don't like homosexuals at all. They kill you. If you say that you're homosexual, they kill you in town. Boy, you realize, no, kaka, kaka, kaka. You are dead. Instant. Oh. I would lead you and bring you into the house of my mother who used to instruct me. And I would give you spiced wine to drink from the juice of my pomegranates. You would have special things if you were closer and had closer relationships. There are certain special things you have. But until you have certain closer relationships, certain things are left out of your life. Because when can they lead you to your mother's house to drink that juice? Spiced wine. You can never have the spiced wine. You are not among those ty- that type. Your relationships are stunted and undeveloped. Undeveloped relationships. Apostle Paul experienced this and he said this in my closing scripture which is actually the title of my message 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 he was so sad he said our mouth 2 Corinthians chapter 6 you find it in the New Testament our mouth has spoken freely to you O Corinthians, our heart is open wide. But look at what he said in verse 12. You are not restrained by us, but you are restrained in your own affections. You are restrained in your own, in your affections. You are restrained. Most of us are restrained. What does the King James say? You are are restricted by us. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. You are restricted by your own affections. You are restricted by your own affections. Is that what the King James says? No. You are straightened. Oh, that's why you never understand it. But this one says, you are restrained in your own affections. You are restrained. And as you understand what I'm saying, yes. you are restrained. Yeah. You are restrained in your affections. You are restrained. You are inhibited. You cannot express love. You, you, you cannot say, I love you. Because it means too many bad things. You are restrained. You are restrained towards God. You are restrained towards your marriage partner. You are restrained in your relationships, brothers and sisters. You have a 
abnormal relation. You are restrained. You are restrained. May Tonight, my message is entitled, You are restrained in your affections. You are restrained. May God release you to have a normal relationship. How many would like to marry a man who does not trust women? How many ladies would like to say, I, whose, whose main policy is fear woman? <laughs> and save your life. And another, how many would like to marry a woman whose mind is don't trust any man? All men are vile, bad. A man is not a pillow that you put your head on. Ben ma what? Onye what? Sumie is what? Pillow. Ben ma onye sumie. Sumie. You don't put your head on that pillow. This is the mind you have married somebody. You will always be asking her, why don't you do this for me? Because her mind is, you a man, I don't put my head on such a pillow. And you don't know what you are dealing with. Many of us, we, have abnorm- we are abnormal. You see, your life, those of you who are ladies and even brides, you are like an apple. Beautiful apple. When somebody comes to sleep with you, it's like somebody has taken a bike um, and you are now not so beautiful. And then another person has come um, and now you are not so, and you know when the apple is bitter, after some time that place becomes brown. Then another one comes um, 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 um. Now there you are. And now you are going to be presented to here comes the this is what is being given to the brother. So now the brother takes it and then he takes a bite. Um, and all that he's getting are some seeds. Because the first person you gave yourself to without inhibitions, what he did to you, it has removed a bite out of you. Um, um, um. I told you, don't come in the evening. Um, um, um. Huh? Apple core deformity. Hmm. It's a sign of cancer on x rays. What, what cancer is that? Colonic carcinoma. Colonic carcinoma. Apple core deformity. <laughs> ah. hey, do you see how life has. Look at me. If I've had a pastor who has been so wicked to me before. And when I see other pastors, I say, you, I don't trust you. So now the apple, my apple has been bitten at by, by this orangu and by that orangu and that orangu has bitten. So now I am not a nice fruit to experience. That's why some pastors, or even it gets to a point, they, they look very hardened and they don't have patience. They say, you are, you are small boys and girls. Get to the side. Let me walk to my chauffeur to drink. I have no time for nonsense. They have seen certain things. Better and nicer than you. Who were so wicked. So now you are not nice anymore. And that's one of the reasons why I determined in my heart. No matter what anybody does to me. I try to recover. And still love again. Otherwise I become like that apple. Which is now so first of all ugly to look at. Deformed. And then not nice to eat. Many of us, we are not nice to marry. Pray for the person who marries you. He will receive a defect, a defective person as a spouse. Both men and women. 
You look nice on the outside with your lipstick and but there's something wrong with you. Sometimes even what you saw in your parents, what you saw in the past, what you saw in your family, it has affected you. You are not a normal person. So even though you look nice and you come, there's something wrong. God, you can't love anymore. And that's how the ministry is. You can't trust people. Do you know what people have done to me? People have stood in this pulpit and have said to me, if I was to respond to that, we will not be here. No. I will not trust anybody around me. I know some churches, there's no assistant pastor. The pastor and his wife are the pastors of a church. Reverend and Mrs. Everybody else is nothing. They have seen certain things before. May we now be healed and may we now be lovable and loving. We should be able to love. I should be able to tell Oko, I love you, brother. I feel love. I feel love. And I shouldn't feel despised. Oh, that you were like my brother. That we eat from the same breast. Machalbas Balamas. May you have the love that draws out the anointing. The Bible says with love we shall draw water from the springs, from the wells. It's only with love that you can draw that water and that fresh anointing. Lift your hands and thank him. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing. Oh, yes. Mosinde Kermilo Brodile Samanda Lamberede. Brolide Bredebre Kebroso Probobro Shanandere. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Mondolo Crozimbesh Medinde Dindiri Dinini Nini Mosinde. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Dolaramandes. Mon esperbelijos. Ramiendos, mermiendos, mermiendos, maramalbarmanades. Feriguelos, chelibres, carabeles. Thank you, Jesus your great love your great blessing mores erules marelises shelberidos merilode semendelere father thank you so much you are restrained in your affections thank you Jesus lift your hands with me right now You gave me love. You gave me love. Lord, did I give love to you? Did I give love? You gave me love when no one gave me time of day. You gave me love, Jesus. You look deep inside. You look deep inside. While the rest of the world looked but away. Lord, did I look deep inside you? When you looked deep inside you me. You smiled at me. You smiled at me. When there were just frowns everywhere. Oh my Jesus. You smiled at me. And you gave me love. You gave me love. When nobody gave me a prayer. Come on, sing it again. You gave me love, Jesus. Do I give you oh, love? Oh, you gave me love. When no one gave me time of day. And you looked deep inside. While the rest of the world looked away. Oh Jesus, you smiled at me. And you smiled at me when there were just frowns everywhere. Oh my Jesus. And you 
you gave me love when nobody gave me a prayer. That's why. Oh, that's why. That's why. That's why I call you Savior. That's why I call you friend. Cause you touched my heart. You touched my soul. Help me start all over again. Sing it. Oh, oh, that's, why that's why. That's I why. I love you, Jesus, and that's why I'll always care. Cause you gave me love. You gave me love when nobody gave me a prayer. Listen to me. Listen to me. Look at me. You gave me love. Sing it slowly. You gave me love when no one gave me time of day. People had no time. But you loved me. You gave me love. You looked deep inside. You looked deep inside. While the rest of the Everybody world was passing by. looked away. But you looked deep inside. You see where it was paining me. And you smiled at you me. You smiled when everybody was serious. When there were just frowns oh everywhere. Oh my Jesus. Oh, and you gave me love mm. when nobody gave me a prayer. That's why. That is why. Oh, Sing it. That's why. That's why I call you Savior. That's why I call you Savior. That's why. That's why I call you friend. For you touched my heart. You touched my soul. You helped you me help start me. all over again. That's why I call you Savior. That's why I call you Savior. And that's why I call you friend. Oh, you gave me love. You gave me love. Sing it. When nobody gave me a prayer. This is a secret. People don't know. That's why somebody may call may never call you pastor because you never gave love yes yes maybe you can only inherit sheep but no one will ever look at you and say that's my pastor because there's no love in you just duties love is something you can feel What's the first line again? You gave me love when no one gave me time of no day. No time. No time. No time. Sing it. Come on. And you look deep you look inside. Inside. While the rest of the world looked away. You know there's something inside all of us. Very few people can see beyond the smile. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, most people can't see inside. But you looked inside. You saw that there was crying inside me. That's why somebody may call you brother or sister. That's my brother. That's my friend. That's my pastor. That's my father. That's my daddy. Because you look deep inside. What's the next line? You smiled at me. You smiled. When there were just frowns everywhere. Smiling. Oh, oh, oh. You have to learn to smile. In the ministry. To smile. For people to become happy and relaxed. When you smile, suddenly they are at ease. How nice it is to go to a place when the person is even just selling something. And the person smiles. You smiled at me. You, smiled. you were selling granules, but you smiled. You were selling soap, but you smiled at me. When everybody was so 
wickedly looking somewhere else. You gave me love. That's why. If I'm boring, you go home. But for me, I am enchanted with the love of God and the love of Christ. It's a special thing to me. And most people don't know the real secret of ministry. People are not doing things because of this, their duty. People are doing things because of love. Maybe you don't know. You gave me love. You looked inside. Pastor's eyes. You must have eyes to see to the eyes of people. God has given me eyes. I can look through the eye. I can see when people are crying inside. I have eyes to see. You gave me love. You gave me love. If, I, if I'm boring no you, you can, you can just go. Time I told you, day. just go, just go home. Sing it. And you look deep inside While the rest of the world looked away Why, why, why do you think we are serving Jesus? You smiled and why do you think we have changed our lives? When you look at some of us what, 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 do you, what are you thinking about? What has moved us around? What has changed our whole life? And you gave me love when nobody gave me Sing the second verse. Thank you, Jesus. And you gave me laughter. Laughter. After I'd cried all my tears. And you shone your light mm. when there was darkness everywhere. Yeah. I looked in your eyes and I saw the tenderness there. Oh, oh. And you gave me love when nobody gave me a prayer. And that's why I call you Savior. And that's why I call you friend Because you touched my heart You touched my soul You helped me start all over again That's why, that's why And that's why I love you Jesus And that's why I'll always care You gave me love mm. When nobody gave me a prayer Listen I told you, listen, if you are bored I want you to just go home now You can find a taxi outside it says, when my steps were bathed in butter, the rock poured out for me rivers of oil. How many are looking for anointing? Now he explains why. Why rocks can pour out rivers of oil. He says, because I delivered the poor who cried for help. And the orphan who had no helper. The blessing of the one ready to perish came upon me. And I made the widow's heart sing for joy. I could make a widow sing. When most of us would turn away from the widows. I put on righteousness. I was eyes to the blind. And fit to the lame. I, be, I help blind people. And lame people. That's why I've decided to help the handicapped. From now. Lame. Blind. It's my work also. I was fit to the lame. 
I was eyes to the blind. I made widows sing. The widows were crying. I made them sing. I was a father to the needy. I investigated the case which I did not know. I investigated a case which I didn't know. I didn't just say it's not my case. I investigated the case which I did not know. That's why the rocks brought me rivers of oil. I suck anointing from rocks. I broke the jaws of the wicked and I snatched the prey from his teeth. That's why anointing comes. Love. That you may know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge and be filled with the fullness of Christ. Lift your hands. Sing it for the last time. You gave me love. Sing it. You gave me love when no one gave me time of day. And you look deep inside while the rest of the world looked away. Lord, let the rocks bring forth rivers of oil. And you smiled at me when there were just frowns everywhere. Oh, 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 oh. you gave me love when nobody gave me Sit down. a prayer. Father, we thank you for your blessing today. Help us to know your love, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.